chew right through it is very, very impressive. In fact, that big, cute, round face of his, that is all muscle. <laughs> so if you watch while he chews the next bite, look at his ears. They're going to wiggle back and forth. That tells you about how much muscle he has just in his head. If you imagine like a rubber band that goes from his, the front of his mouth all the way back behind his ears, a giant rubber band of muscle, that's kind of what it looks like for him. And for us humans, our muscles only go to kind of our ears, right in front of our ears. So we have really tiny jaw muscles compared to the panda. And he just rips right through it. <laughs> By the way, if anybody has questions, feel free to just ask. Otherwise, Kevin and I will just kind of talk about whatever we feel like talking about. Was he born here? He was born here. He was born here six years ago um, by mom, who is in the next exhibit. She's not out quite yet. The keeper is still finishing cleaning, but that's actually good news for us because that means um, we get to see what happens when a panda gets released onto their exhibit for the very first time in the morning. Um, we, I mean, it's not very high action because they're still pandas, <laughs> but it's fun to watch. <laughs> Better than sleeping. What's yeah. his name again? Uh, his name is Zhao Li Wu. But you can just call him Wu. It's easier. Will he go back to Wu Bear. Uh, he has an undetermined future. Eventually, he will probably go back to China. Whether it's in the next year or at the very end of his life, we don't know. Um, but part of our loan is that the bears will kind of end their life in China, on Chinese soil. And will he be part of the training program? Yes, he should be. Um, we're hoping. He has really good genes that are still valuable as far as um, breeding goes. So he should probably continue being a breeding bear. It does come down to him in a, in a sense, you know, if he wants to have a mate or not. We have had a bear in the past who couldn't really smell the ladies, which is very important. So he didn't know that the lady he was supposed to be with was ready to start a family. Um, so he couldn't breed because when pandas get ready to breed, the females can become a little aggressive. And so he just thought she was a crazy panda <laughs> lady trying to attack him. So he was like, no thank you, I don't want to have anything to do with her. So that could happen. Other, other factors could contribute to it, but we're hoping he will breed. The pandas can only get pregnant for about 24 to 72 hours in an entire year. So wow. the male and female have to be at the right place at the right time for successful breeding. Um, which is one of the factors that's contributing to why this particular species is threatened or endangered. Uh, not only is it difficult for pandas to breed, but we are basically cutting down their forest in large quantities for things like scaffolding and furniture and flooring, chopsticks, uh, cutting Houses. boards. What? Houses. Houses, yes, all made out of bamboo. The irony is that, that bamboo can be grown all over the world and there's no reason to cut down this animal's habitat for our personal gain. Um, a lot of people think that this uh, animal was running out of food because we were cutting down their habitat, and that necessarily wasn't the case. What was happening is, is that we were leaving them a lot of bamboo. We were isolating them to territories or islands of bamboo, and they weren't able to migrate long distances where bamboo was not available to find other bears. And so they were basically inbreeding and dying off at a very rapid rate, which is one of the reasons why this animal was put on the endangered species list. As of 2016, <laughs> this bear has been removed from the endangered species list because of efforts that conservation uh, organizations like the San Diego Zoo has put forth to breeding this animal in captivity and also for the Chinese government and their breeding and releasing programs as well. These bears are on loan to us, so we do not own them. We actually pay the Ch Chinese government uh, per bear per year and that money goes back into taking care of this animal uh, and being able to release them back in the wild and it has been very successful because they have been released back into the wild. We estimate there to be a little bit under 3,000 of them, about half in the wild and the other half in captivity. You know that his father is yes. 28, he's already in the back. In um, so in, his in father, room, right? I believe, was 29, 29, and he is back in China. He, he yes, already got about back? two or three weeks ago. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, but the mother already stayed. Mother's still here, yeah. She might go back to China too? Yes, or? yes. 
Chad. Well, then maybe it's better to have a wife for him. Yes, yeah, we that think so he, too. Yeah, we want to get a girl for him. We need, yeah, we need to get his girlfriend. They live about 18 to 20 in the wild. So dad's 29 and mom's 27. So yeah, we so tend they, to see them live a lot longer under managed care. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, uh, you know the Bei Yun, she's the first panda uh, who breed, success to breed in the United States, right? Yes, um, successfully breeding without uh, artificial insemination. Oh, okay. yes. Okay, okay. So um, the first one was artificially inseminated, the other five were all natural breeding. Oh, yeah. And she's the first. Oh, okay. yes. That's great. They put out other food for him. And she was the oldest Sometimes one who yes. gave the birth. Yes. <laughs> him, right? She gave birth at 21. <laughs> yeah. And most bears are already dead in the wild. Yeah. So if anybody has a favorite yeah. cologne or perfume, so does he. He really likes Chanel right now, Chanel number five. Uh, so we'll we'll take those perfumes and we'll spray them like on the tree, mm -hmm. and so he'll be attracted to it, which encourages him to go around and explore, and basically just get some exercise. <laughs> Do they get along with any other species that you could put in an exhibit with them? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, not these guys. They're actually considered carnivores. I know, he's eating bamboo, <laughs> um, but since he's considered a carnivore, we don't do any mixed species with these guys. So it's the same for all bears. Technically, all bears are carnivores, although all bears mostly eat vegetation, including polar bears. They usually probably eat the most meat out of the bear family, but they also eat a lot of like fruits and nuts and veggies. Um, Pandas just take it to an extreme where they are almost exclusively if you want to vegetarian. Go over on the back side, you can get a great view if you go oh. into that gate. Okay. Uh, pandas are typically going to be solitary by nature. Um, they are very territorial, so you will not see pandas together in the wild. The only time you're going to see pandas together in the wild is for breeding, which lasts about 30 minutes, or raising young, which lasts almost 18 months. After 18 months, the dogs are going to be out. Yeah. Like never yeah. yeah. Hand lunch, yeah. Yeah. He made a pose. <laughs> he made a pose. <laughs> For the picture. <laughs> okay, this could be a good one too. Uh, main predator for a giant bear is going to be either a wild dog or uh, a type of cat. Uh, however, a fully mature animal will have to come up to worry about. The predator may be going to be a young and old.